let us know what's happening. And you get to ask questions, right? <laughs> we'll see where it goes. Oh, shit, I forgot. Yeah, that's the one. I've never seen before. 
I couldn't figure out how to get it to work. And along with the fact that I felt embarrassed that I was a girl, it was all just too much and I just totally burst into tears. I was really trying to make sure none of the guys noticed because not only would I be this crazy girl taking computer science, I'd also be the crazy girl crying because she couldn't work with computers. <laughs> <laughs> the female tutor did notice though, and she came straight over, gave me the card and introduced herself to Janina and talked to me for a bit. It turned out that at her first ever lab, she also found it all very overwhelming and had trouble with the computer systems. And she had also found it awkward being one of the only girls there. For the rest of the semester, she often talked to me during the quieter times of the lab, whether that was actually talking about programming or just gossiping. <laughs> I'm really happy that Janina was my tutor. She made me realise that I actually was very welcome there. Janina's now a good friend of mine. She's currently do off doing her PhD at the University of Cambridge in the UK, although I still talk to her a lot, and she's one of the other people working on our computer science online book. I think that having female role models, especially tutors, was very important in first year. It made a very good difference to how I felt about being in that minority group. I did actually struggle with the programming stuff though. After about four or five weeks, I just really wasn't understanding how everything should go together in a program. It sometimes took me hours of just hacking at my code, just trying to get it to compile. I didn't think I'd be able to major in computer science, as I wasn't even going to pass that first course at the rate I was going. A guy I knew told me I should just give up and major in something else, because I could never get programming. That <laughs> <absolutely not. laughs> I really didn't want to give up, because I just didn't want to prove it right. So. <laughs> Over the midterm break, I made all my lab handouts, and I went back through them again, starting from the very first lab. That process took a few days and a few more nighters, but when I finished the last lab, I realised I actually understood everything. I was even able to write a few very simple programs of my own. It was also very interesting comparing my answers between my two attempts at the labs. The first time, my code was just lots of hacks and really strange, long-winded ways of getting to the answer I wanted. The second time, my code was reached the point I could read my own code and it just seemed a lot more logical. I then did well on the midterm test, got a very high grade in assignment and found the final exam not too difficult. I got an A plus overall of that course. <laughs> Had I not put all that time in over the midterm break, I genuinely believe I would have ended up with a fail grade in the end. <laughs> Programming is kind of weird in the fact that the skills in it build on each other so tightly. If you don't understand one concept, you are at risk of not understanding anything after it and falling further and further behind. I didn't know that at the time, but my strategy of going back through the lab from the start turned out to be a really good one. So anyway, those were some of my experiences of being a girl in computer science, the challenges I faced in first year, and how close I came to being one of the many students who actually doesn't even pass first year. It's extremely important to make sure your female students know that we do want them in computer science and software engineering and to prepare them so they don't feel alienated by the amount of males. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask me now or just ask me any time during this event or during dinner. Well done. <laughs>
I looked at stats in my second year course this year. Out of the ten top students, four of them were female. Four out of ten. We've only got ten percent female total. <laughs>
to my story as well. It just about makes me cross up sometimes. <laughs> but there's lots of cool stuff here. Oh my God, sorry. Um, <laughs> but there's the programming challenge for girls. Um, yeah. Look at this and all that, that that's encouraging the young girls. Um, I just like to have fun, but acknowledge it's hard. Not just for over yes. that. Yeah. It's like, yes. yeah, yeah, easy. Like yeah. I'm saying, let's have fun with the hard stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's robotics, um, you know, and I do it as an extracurricular, so not even just the kids taking... Um, um, digital tech will, will, mm. will can have an opportunity to do it as well, so um, we get into the robots and do that. Um, but I just think it's just like So the idea of having year nines welcome with the understanding 
they want to come back, they're going to be helpless, they're not allowed to come mm -hmm. eat. Mm -hmm. but that's yeah. what we work with you. Mm -hmm. Sounds like okay. right. I mean, I'm, I'm not precious about it. Really, the whole idea of it was to expose yeah. girls' yeah. programming as much as possible. Yeah. Cool. Oh, the, the, the thing I was going to bring up, and it's kind of connected to what we've just headed into with that, that comment, and it's he headed into your one, is um, um, being one of probably about five girls at Otago when I did the um, info science thing, um, all the class got really upset about this one assignment, and the lecturer said one thing very, very important to us, it's like, you're, there's 25 people in here, and you're a small portion of the population that can do what you're doing, so take a break with that. And then I thought about it, and I, I saw a, um, one of my kids, I've been playing with robots, and she is so understanding of the flowchart and how these robots make work, the kids have actually picked her up as being the expert, and it's, and it's that thing about the kids, she understands it totally, so it's using her as an expert, and she's getting so much kudos out of it from the kids. And it's, and it's identify, if you can identify girls in, and, and use their specialisations to give them the kudos, then they become role models to continue the thing through. And I mean, if you've got females in their staff, you know, older students, older girls who can role model, you know, then, then it's not like you're all by yourself in, in the IT of the, the secondary school because... It's the you know you can you've got people you can talk to automatically. That's so cool. Well done, Heidi, for being another thing. <laughs> <laughs> Comment over here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this idea of when to run this is how I think for girls. First of all, I like that running one for boys, but not necessarily separate at the same time. Yeah. Or don't really, not, don't feel too strongly about that. I like this is the motivation for running for girls. The big thing that I see as an advantage for us is that we only get to see a small proportion of kids in year nine that choose to do computing in one form or another. Yeah. We don't see everyone. And this is a great opportunity for us to get exposure to those kids that aren't doing computing. This year we opened up to kids who weren't doing computing. And we did a bit of hand thinking, I must admit. But the idea that those kids then go back with a, for their first exposure to computer programs, which we, because we only see you know, half the kids or less than a third of the kids, mm. um, these are kids we would not always touch, and those kids do talk, and that's why I see it as a big advantage. And personally, I'd like to see it earlier in the year because I think that's a much better time for us. It. It's easier to get kids to make the right decision first than they have to go back and grovel to the dean and see if the numbers still fit. Mm. Being that's just hard oh, because of the logistics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so well, let's solve the problem that exists rather than say it's too hard. You know, I'm sure we can get around the problem. <laughs> we we well, have tried very hard to solve the problem. Well, you know, two computer labs in one school somewhere, you knock them out for two, and we do it for exams, you close down half of what, don't you? Let's close down a rock for, for one day. There, there is also a great advantage um, in them coming to the universities because it helps in some of those things that I raised. That having been to a university and seen some familiarity, having interacted with some university staff and students, that helps bring people through too. It also, it's easier for multiple schools. It's hard for the universities. We can't just shut down a lab like that. Canterbury tried it and it didn't work very well. Can I just suggest something else? The, the resources written for November, but basically it's going through to the following November, if a school wanted to expose their girls in June or July, set yourself up as a site, just email me. You'll get access to all the resources. Run it at your school. Yeah. Invite the friendly school leaders down the road if they want to. But there's no reason why you can't do it. If you took four girls to the official at the end, you probably have them as helpers rather than competitors. Well, there's no reason why you're opening it up. Yeah. 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 Anytime you want. No, but that's great. I mean, I'm about to that. That'd be great for me. Yeah. 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 We're on the West Coast, we just have it regionally. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Oh, okay. Um, okay. What is it? Yeah. 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 Mago.phillips at gmail.com with, yeah. with two, two L two in two P's. Can you say again? Mago. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Express? self-sustaining and people wouldn't have these big barriers that Heidi overcame great but I know other students who don't they just yeah. leave we've got to get to that 30 percent and that's going to take lots of effort then it will keep going but cool. regardless of his wording <laughs> yes <laughs> that's <laughs> it. okay on that happy note uh, we'll uh, break for lunch, which is just outside. Um, just a couple of announcements. Thank you. A couple of quick announcements. Um, if you want to take lunch outside, I don't know what the weather's like. If you want to take lunch outside, you're very welcome. Um, there's the Seven Bridges Garden. If you haven't seen that, it's the problem of the Seven Bridges. If you don't know what that is, ask one of the helpers here. They might know. Um, and if you're gluten-free, come and see me because you've got special instructions. Thank you. Thank you.